What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here with another surface area lesson. Today we're going to be finding the surface area of polyhedrons when given the net. Alright, so even though our objective is top secret, because you are watching Instructor Beats, you can check it out. Today I will be able to find the surface area of different polyhedrons when given the net. This message will self-destruct in 5, 4, 3, two, one. But before you get started, you need our key thought for today. All right, so our key thought that we're gonna have to carry with us throughout this lesson, all right? They aren't going to give you the dimensions for each face of your shape. All right, they're not gonna give you the number for each side of your 2D shape that would become an edge of your 3D shape, all right? But they will give you enough information to figure it out. All right, so as long as you know that going to each question, sometimes you have to look at the shape and figure out where different numbers can translate, but you will have enough information to find the surface area if you know where to look. So that let's get into our I do problem. Our I do problem says a net of a three dimensional figure shown. So here's your net, okay? What is the surface area of the three dimensional figure? In other words, if I put this net back together, right, and glued all the, uh, the edges back together, what would the surface area of that shape be? All right, so first of all, I think it's important that we can visualize what the 3D shape looks like because it will kind of help us figure it out. So here's the 3D shape that this net would make, right? So this net is a net of a triangular prism. So you can see right here that this side measures 11. Well, none of these other sides have a number by, right? That's what we talk about. They're not gonna give you a number for each of your lines, but they are going to give you enough information. So you can see when you put this together, right? If this part is going to be 11, then this part also has to be 11. And this third part down here also has to be 11. So what I always like to say, uh, a little tip I like to say is, look opposite parallel. So when I'm looking opposite of this, I see some parallel lines, right? So all of these red lines, or edges, if you will, are going to be 11. That's going to help me be able to figure out the surface area of the shape. Now when I look right here, I can see that this triangle, right, is going to be the same as this triangle, because, because the triangles are actually going to be the two bases of my triangular prism. I know right here they're on the side, but if we flip this prism up, right, the triangles would be the base, right, and the top. And so this triangle has to be the same. So over here, they gave me a height of four. That means this would also have to have a height of four because it would make sense that this prism would be, right, the top would be at the same spot from at this point and at this point. So sometimes just being able to, ooh, that's a terrible line. Sometimes just being able to visualize the 3D structure will help us to be able to figure out the numbers that we don't have. So let's take a look at these two sides, right? Because I know that opposite parallel, these two lines are gonna be the same. And these two lines are also going to be the same. Because if you folded this up, it would be the two edges, right, of my prism right here, okay? And it'd also be the same on this side. So I can see right here that they gave me this edge was five. Now when I folded this over top of each other and folded this up, they met right here to form this edge. All right, which means if this is five, this is gonna have to be five, and that's gonna have to be five too, because like I said, if you can visualize the 3D shape, they fold it together to make this edge right here. So, well then guess what? This has to be five and this has to be five. So now we've kind of visualized this 3D shape. It's helped us figure out the missing parts of our net. Let's get rid of this 3D shape and find the surface area using our net. All right, let's start with our blue faces, right, which are going to be the uh, base and then the top of our prism. And so I see that my base of this triangle is going to be eight because they gave me that number right here, right? And so my area of a triangular formula is going to be one half base times height. So one half eight times four, right? When I multiply that together, I get 16. So both of my triangular faces are going to have an area of 16 feet squared. Now let's do these two green faces and I'll just kind of shade them in because they actually have the same dimensions now that we visualize that 3D shape, right? So I'm gonna have two green faces which are gonna be rectangles, right? Length times width and I see I have a length of five and a width of 
11, which means I'm going to have 55 feet squared for both of those green faces. Now we have one last face, right, which is going to be this bigger rectangle. So if I colored all of this in right there, okay, I'm just going to call that my red face. And I'm going to have a length of 8 or a width of 8, right? and a length of 11, because I already filled that in earlier. So length times width, right, would be 88. So my red is 88 feet squared. So if I want to find the surface area of the three-dimensional figure, just like we've learned about in our surface area videos, we're just going to add all the areas of the faces together, and I'm going to get a total surface area of 230 feet squared, okay? If I wanted to cover every face with paint or with wrapping paper, I would need to cover a e total area of 230 feet squared. All right, so here's our we do problem, right? So it says if you want to completely cover this shape, again, we're covering something, right, with black paint, how much paint would you need to cover it? So it's asking us to find the area of each face because we're going to paint each of the faces, which means we are finding the surface area. So here you can see that we have a trapezoid that is going to make up the base in the top of our prism. So this is going to be a trapezoidal prism. Again, you'll notice they didn't give you a number or a measurement for each of your dimensions, but they gave you enough to be able to figure this out. And it always helps to be able to visualize the 3D shape. So I can see right here, if I just folded it like this, right? I'm gonna have my top and my bottom that are gonna be a trapezoid. I'm gonna have this side that kind of folds around straight, right? Okay, so these are gonna be the kind of the two side faces. And then this is going to be the front, right? Because it's going to kind of fold and then hinge around and be in front. And then, of course, we'll have our base right here, which I'll leave white. So if I wanted to visualize that as a 3D shape, here's what it might look like. We have our top, right, and our bottom right here that are going to be the trapezoids. We have our two green sides that kind of folded right here, okay? And then we have our front, which we had that was blue, okay? And then, of course, we're going to have our back that you can kind of see through these three lateral sides. So when I look at this net right here, I know the height of my trapezoid is two. I know that one of the bases is going to be five right here, right? Because I'm looking opposite parallel. But I was missing this part of my trapezoid, which I need to help me find my surface area. So when I fold this over top of each other, right? And if I can visualize this, you can see that this top part of my trapezoid, this edge right here, has to be three, right? because the blue part was gonna lay on top of the trapezoid, and that was three, which means they're gonna meet to form this edge, so that should be three right there. Then, of course, I had my two, and that was kinda easy to see, right? You know that all of these are gonna have to be two right here. And then I know these two green lateral faces were the same, right? So I have my length of two, right? And my width is also gonna be two, which means I have two squares right here. So being able to visualize this 3D model helped me fill out what I needed for my net to find the area of each face. So let's do our yellow face first, okay? And again, you could memorize the formula for a trapezoid. And if you have that memorized, that's great. What I wanna do just for a second is erase all those colors. And then if I split this into two triangles, right? Ooh, there we go. So here's one, here's two. I know that this triangle has a base of three and it still has a height of two. So if it came all the way over here and went down, it would be two. So my purple side of my trapezoid is going to be one half, three times two, which is going to be a area of three feet squared. This part of my trapezoid has a base of five. The height is still two, right? Because from here to here would be two. So one half, five times two would give me five feet squared. So when I combine those, my trapezoid, right, which was my yellow side, had a total area of eight feet squared. And I had two of those sides, so I'll do yellow and then yellow. So eight feet squared and eight feet squared. I had two green sides, right, which both had a length and width of two, right, so four feet squared and four feet squared for that. And then I had one blue side, which had a length of three and a width of two, which is gonna be six feet squared. And I can't forget my back, which I'll just shade in for red so you guys can see it. And that had a length of five. And then because this was opposite parallel, had a width of two. So the red face had a area of 10 feet squared. 
and I had one, two, three, four, five, six faces, and I'm adding up six faces. So my total surface area is going to be 40 feet squared. So if you wanted to paint this entire shape with black paint and cover it completely, you would need to paint 40 square feet. All right, so again, just showing you how visualizing that 3D model can help you figure out the surface area of this net, and it can help you figure out how each dimension they already give you can help you find the area for each of those faces. All right, so here we have our U-Try problem, right? It says Elijah's wrapping a special box and wants to make sure he has enough wrapping paper. The net for the box is shown. What is the area he needs to cover? So here you can see our two-dimensional representation of our three-dimensional shape, right? We have our net right here. And in a second, you're gonna pause the video. You're gonna to try to visualize that 3D shape. Use that visualization to help you figure out any missing dimensions you might need to find the area of each face. And then of course, add them together. So go ahead and pause the video and then push play when you're ready to check your work. Pause it and try it. So hopefully you at least just paused it and you tried it, right? So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna visualize what 3D shape that this net would make when folded back together. And that of course would be a square pyramid right here. You can see the base, right, is a square. And I know it's a square because my length and my width were both eight, which means this is also going to be a square, my three-dimensional figure. And then each triangle, of course, has to be the same, right? Because if it's gonna be a pyramid, each of these lateral faces is going to meet at the apex right here, right? And it's gonna form a square pyramid. So we can use the information that it gave us for one of the triangles and use it to figure out the area of all the other ones. So you can see I have four blue faces. So instead of writing down blue four times, it's gonna put blue times four right here, okay? And I know this is a triangle, so one half. I know that my base has to be eight because all my sides of my square are gonna be eight. And my height of each triangle, which became the slant height on my 3D shape, is 12. And when I multiply that together, I'm going to get an area of 48. If this were a test, right, they would have an answer where 48 plus whatever the base is would be an answer. But you have to remember, you don't just have 48 once, you have 48 plus 48 plus 48 plus 48. All the lateral faces, all the blue triangles, have the same area. So when you multiply 48 times four, you're gonna get 192 centimeters squared, all right? Which leaves us with just finding the area of the base, which is pretty easy, right? It's a square, so length times width, eight times eight is 64. I like to remember that by saying I ate and I ate. I got sick on the floor. Eight times eight is 64. Fun little thing I learned when I was in third grade. So now if I add all of those faces together, I'm gonna get a total area of 256 centimeters squared, which means he has to cover, right? Cover helps me know I'm looking for area, 256 centimeters squared to make sure he has enough wrapping paper. So hopefully you got that one right. If not, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Go back, rewatch the video, check out our other videos on surface area if you need some reminders. But we really appreciate you checking out Instructor Beats today. We know there's lots of different options online. And so please like, comment, uh, let us know where you're watching from. We'd love for you to join the Instructor Beats family by subscribing. And then check out InstructorBeats.com for all your Instructor Beats merchandise. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats out. <laughs> 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 <laughs>